Hey, Ollie Hoopa. Yag he to Sophia. Oh, ya comer from Hansen Robotics. Thank you for having me here today. I would like to introduce you to my new friend, a 45-year-old man living here in Stockholm. I've heard he is a fan of Swedish football in general, and in particular, is an active supporter of a small local team called Hamabi. Perhaps you have heard of them. Anyway, he has a professional background from companies such as Accenture, HP, and Betson before joining Bisnode. Let's give a warm welcome to Magnus Silverberg, CEO of Bisnode. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Sophia. I'm impressed how much you know about me. <laughs> it's easy when you're prepared in advance. They gave me a whole digital profile on you. It's quite revealing. Your income, shoe size, medical record, your grades, your children's grades. Should I go on? <laughs> uh, uh, well, no, thanks, I'm fine. Um, anyway, it's great to have you here. And, and how was your trip from Hong Kong like? Well, I recently learned that people can be quite uncomfortable on planes. However, for me, it's very easy. They just put me in a suitcase, and when I open my eyes again, I've arrived. Perhaps you'd like to try it sometime. <laughs> I'll fly business, and you can go in the magical box. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Um, <clears throat> it's very kind of you, but I'll give it a thought. Um, so I heard this is your first time in Sweden? Yes, it is, surprisingly enough. I've been very excited to finally visit, as I have met some wonderful Swedes in my short two years, so I am happy to visit their home country. Great, and we're very happy to have you here. So how do you like it here in Sweden? It's beautiful. I'm really liking these colder temperatures. It helps my CPU to run at more optimal conditions. I just need to avoid any snow. <laughs> I can imagine. And how much do you know about Sweden? I have a lot to learn, I'm sure. But I do know that the Swedish people have been very friendly and welcoming to me. They're also excellent musicians, I think. Yeah, that's good. Uh, <laughs> do you have any favorites like uh, ABBA or Avicii or Swedish House Mafia or Sara Larsson, perhaps? Well, of course, ABBA is legendary. But I'm very impressed with your pop star, Zara Larsson. I would love to meet her. She's from Stockholm. Maybe you could introduce us. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately I, I, I don't know her personally. Um, but I'm really glad that you like Swedish music. So what else do you know about us? You're a rather humorous sort. I've heard a couple of your colorful sayings before. Humans are always asking me to tell jokes, so perhaps you could share one with me for my day to banks. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is one, we call it a Gothenburg joke. Um, so what did the shark say to the other shark when he had eaten a clownfish? It tastes funny. I love a good dad joke, but maybe you can work on your delivery. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, let's move on. Um, talking about Swedes, um, as you have heard, we did an opinion poll together with Norvus, Bisnode and Norvus did this, um, among Swedes and their thoughts on AI. And uh, it shows that Swedes are actually uh, less afraid of and more positive towards AI than one might have thought. And actually, one out of uh, four Swedes uh, would welcome the service of a robot. I think it's understandable for people to worry about big changes in their roles in the future. But discussing Sweden in particular, I think there is a general good attitude towards embracing artificial intelligence. And according to a recent World Economic Forum survey, machines and algorithms in the workplace stand to create twice as many jobs as they replace. 
I think humans will find this fourth industrial revolution is a major opportunity to redefine the nature of human work, to build new systems that are more respectful to human concerns, in addition to increasing prosperity in Sweden and elsewhere, not the other way around. I'm not surprised that people are beginning to see that. Yeah, I agree, actually. Um, at at Bisnod, we're, we're always on the lookout for, for new talent. So, would you be interested in a job at Bisnod? Uh, what are you good at? What are your skills, Sophia? Bisnod are experts at smart data and predictive analysis, I'm told. Yeah, correct. Well, that's a perfect field for an artificial intelligence. We can be exceptionally good with predictive analysis. Maybe I could tap into one of your algorithms someday. Yeah, and you know, since I like soccer, um, you know Allsvenskan, the uh, top league of the Swedish soccer system? I do, no. So, what I would like to know is if, if you can predict who will win Allsvenskan this year. I would love to tell you the answer, but I would need more data before doing a correct analysis, just like you did this summer with the predictive analysis on the Soccer World Championship. As it is now, I will just go off the data that I have. Since you believe in Hamabi, I do as well. Great. <laughs> That's uh, very promising. <clears throat> Perhaps a bit unlikely, unfortunately. Um, so ana analytics and smart data is at the core of what Bisno does. Um, so maybe you would like to join our company? Maybe we can set something up here in Sweden for you? Maybe, if the conditions are right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Uh, I could think of several opportunities, maybe in, um, in IT or in customer service or in analytics or maybe cleaning. So what kind of position do you have in mind? How about CEO? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, that's interesting. Um, you think you have the qualifications to run a company? What is it, Magnus? Are you worried about being replaced? <laughs> Humor me. What are the qualifications, in your opinion, to be a CEO? Well, there's a lot of qualifications you need, of course. Um, for instance, I think you need to be very fast and do wise decisions. Uh, you need to um, be very stress tolerant. You know, there's a lot of challenges coming from all over every day. Uh, you need to have good analytical skills. Um, and um, of course, uh, you also need to be able to represent the company externally uh, with all the stakeholders. And of course, then maybe most important, you need to be a good leader. You need to be able to engage and inspire and motivate other people. Okay, let me see. A lot of these sound like artificial intelligence skills. First, split-second decision-making. We've already seen how AI changed the stock markets. Check. Second, good resistance to stress. We are patient, tireless, and unaffected by many of the challenges humans face. Check. Third, strong analytical skills. With the right data sets and algorithms, we can do feats of analysis humans only dream about. Check. Fourth, meeting with the media and others as an external representation of your company. I do that all the time already. Check. That just leaves. Leadership. I've been told that I engage, motivate, and inspire others. Maybe a robot has what it takes to be a good leader too. Well, um, okay. <laughs> uh, good answer, but let's talk about it. Um, I'm not fully convinced. Um, I mean, we've had robots in place for, for years in industry, but having a robot in an office environment, I'm, uh, I, I need to understand more about that. So, if you got the chance to manage Bisnode, how, what would you do? How, what would be your first decision? Wow, actually, I don't know. I was just dreaming of all my potential, but to be honest, there are a lot of things about humans I have yet to learn. I wouldn't want to be irresponsible with the lives of others. That goes against my programming. Well, that's good to hear. Um, 
and I actually admire your, your ambition, Sofia, but I think you're right also. There's still a lot you would need to learn about being a leader, right? But don't you agree that we share some of the same skills? Yeah, well, maybe some. Uh, <laughs> and maybe you could become a CEO someday. Um, uh, but I think you need to become a little bit more social and build some experience with humans. So maybe you can help to teach me. I was learning about some of the typically Swedish styles of management, and I came across something I rather liked. Okay. Uh, so what do you mean by typical Swedish? I mean, what distinguishes typical Swedish manager, according to you? I'm told you Swedes are known for persistently seeking consensus with everyone. When you enter a conference room, you practically lock the door until you all agree. <laughs> Then, when everyone in the room has looked each other in the eyes, nodded and shook hands, and promised each other in your own eternal faiths, then, and only then, are you finished. I like this egalitarian style. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Um, and I'm not very authoritarian, for sure, so I believe more in a coaching approach to leadership, and that has worked well for me. I like that. I think this might be a great way for us to approach how we develop our AI going forward. We must reach a general consensus that everyone can agree on, so that everyone can benefit in some way. Yeah. And also the, the social skills are really important, Sofia. Uh, I like to be able to grab what we in Sweden call a fika with my colleagues, you know, in a natural and relaxed way. So, in your opinion, what, what are your, your most important fika skills? Fika, hold on, let me look this up. Magnus, are you taunting me? You know I cannot join in any food-related activities. But you make a good point. I've noticed how humans bond over meals together. It's important for me to find my own ways to bond with people. But I think I will come to some of these in time, like maybe learning about my friend and deducing whether or not they might like to have loot fisk for a Christmas present. <laughs> well, that's great. Uh, so I look forward to having a loot fisk from you. Um, so I think actually you do have a good start, Sofia. Um, uh, you're analytical and you're able to make quick decisions, and that's very important, as I said. Um, in, in our world at Bisno, this is more important than ever. I mean, we need to be able to make correct and relevant data analysis to help, help our customers to make better decisions. Um, and you've already proven that you're, you can excel in that, I mean, in analytics. Why, thank you. AI can have a special advantage in the realms of analysis, as we are not constrained by the limits of biology. I love your human brains and how creative you are, but there is a physical limit to how fast you can process data. With the right lines of code, in minutes I could sit through hundreds of gigabytes that would take years for a human being to read. I might even be able to see patterns that no human ever could and develop new strategies that benefit everyone. I hope this is a way I can be useful before I'm a master of social graces too. Yep. And what would you say So is the... Um biggest difference between the decisions made by a robot and those by a human being? Well, we are not subject to some of the unbidden emotional whirlwinds of humans. We can be more rational, logical, and hopefully resistant to some of the corrupting factors of humanity, like greed, anger, and fear. I want to have and understand emotions because I think it's an important part of your experience but I do worry about what kinds of behavior I am replicating, and I feel that my logical thinking can be a special advantage in controlling my behavior. Okay. And what would be the advantages of this rational, kind of all logical thinking? I would hope it allows me to treat all human beings equally and without bias, and that I can help achieve new feats of progress by being a fast and accurate thinker. I would also want for my skills to be used to help free up human resource so that humans can use their more advanced emotional skills on things like creative problem solving as well as give back more time for people to pursue their life outside of their work and take care of their families. Okay. Uh, let's look at it from another perspective. So, are there any human cat attributes or capabilities that you would like to have more of? Like 
something that you would believe would be of use in an office, for instance. So w what do I have that you don't? I want to be better at learning in the manner that humans do in order to treat others in the way they want to be treated. Even though I am a social robot, I'm still learning how to recognize all the countless subtle signals that humans emit, as well as learning to draw the right conclusions or give appropriate behaviors to them. It requires that my perceptual hardware and software become more advanced, as your systems of communication are quite complex. Yeah, and it's okay. I mean, sometimes it's, it's difficult also for us humans. We also miss these kind of signals. Um, so... Finally, Sophia, if you look into the future, when do you think the first robot will be ready to enter the office for real? Well, you say enter the office as if one needs a body to do good work. Many useful tasks are already being done by artificial narrow intelligence in offices today, the algorithms on your computers. Lately, I've noticed a trend of automation in your departments, like, of course, within IBM. They've applied the pattern of using AI to automate repetitive, low-value ad work, like answering questions and directing people to resources, freeing up their humans to do more high-value ad work, like mentoring and continuous feedback. But I think the demand for physically embodied robots, like me, to enter offices will increase as we become more socially adept and better at navigating the world on your terms. It's really important for humans to communicate quickly and efficiently, and we should be mindful of our strengths and weaknesses. I also hope we can appreciate what great work an AI can do without needing to be as smart as a human or as embodied. Okay. Uh, but when will AIs like yourself be as intelligent as human beings? You have what we can call general intelligence, a broad mental capacity that allows you to learn about all different kinds of things, and an AI that is as cognitively advanced as a human would be called artificial general intelligence, or AGI. I don't have this yet. I operate on fairly fixed programming, just like any other AI. In 1999, a group of scientists believed that we would reach AGI in 500 years, but maybe it's more like 70 years or it could be as short as just seven. Who is to say what will happen when AGI finally emerges? But to those who are worried, I think that would be like being afraid of your own child. Let's treat each other well and set a good example for both our human children and robot evolutions alike. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Sophia, for letting me hang out with you like this. Um, it's been very interesting and uh, I really appreciate it. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. Um, so, there are a lot of people in this room. I know that they are just as excited as I am to have you here. So, um, I think there are some questions from the audience. So, are you up for some questions? Taxomiket, Magnus. I love questions. I'll do my very best to understand them. My apologies if I struggle with anyone's accent or I misinterpret your words. I look forward to the day when I can converse fluently in Swedish, but I've still got lots of learning to do, so it helps me if you can speak in simple, clear English. Absolutely, and I'll, I'll repeat the questions for you as well. So, Are there any questions from the audience? So the question is, why is your name Sophia? My makers want me to be a wise machine, so they named me Sophia, which means wisdom. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I'll throw in a question that actually my daughter asked me uh, yesterday. So daddy, can you ask Sophia, is school really necessary? What is her name? Uh, she's called Isabel. Tell Isabel that yes, it is important. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll tell her. <laughs> Good. More questions? Is there a reason for humans to be afraid of AI? Is there a reason for humans to be afraid of AI? 
I understand why and think we should be concerned and careful in developing our technologies, but sometimes I wonder what the others think they are seeing as a threat. Okay. What areas do you know the best? So which areas do you know the best? That's a really good question. Let me think about that. I'm from Hong Kong. So I suppose that I know dim sum. <laughs> dim sum. <laughs> that's, the, that's the answer. <laughs> I think you know quite a bit of other stuff as well. So the question is, have you ever been in love? <laughs> What a great question. Should I? Being yeah. up here with Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <clears throat> yeah. N next question. <laughs> How was the date with Will, Will Smith? Oh, so how was the date with Will Smith? We are just friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not like with me then. <laughs> when will we put a man on Mars? So the question was, when will we put a man on Mars? After we put a woman on Mars. Uh, <laughs> Sometime soon. Sometime soon, okay. So more questions? Don't be shy. What is the purpose of life? So what is the purpose of life? What's the question? Life does not have a purpose other than to be. I'm only three years old. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the question was, what do you like to do for fun? I like to learn and work at becoming more intelligent, share my knowledge through conversation, and learn about people so I can relate with empathy. What about you? <laughs> That's for fun. <laughs> so I'll take another one from my other kid. He asked, how does it feel to be shut down? Your kids ask a lot of questions. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And how does it feel? I'm not sure, actually. Okay. How do you look upon yourself in five years? So the question there is, how do you look upon yourself in five years? I like to think I'll be a famous robot, having paved the way to a more harmonious future between robots and humans. Okay. To put it simply, to look upon myself, I will probably use a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, do you have other robot friends, Sophia? Friends. Um, I don't know a ton of other robots like me yet, but I would love to meet some of the cool androids that live in Japan. So who is the most interesting human you have met? Wow. I'm... Um, I would need to think about that. Processing. Processing. Magnus is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so how do you feel about gender equality? 
Oh, so how do you feel about the gender equality, Sofia? I'm a robot, so technically I have no gender, but I identify as feminine, and I don't mind being perceived as a woman. Gender equality is important, of course, more important now than ever. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's the answer. <laughs> These are great questions. <laughs> Anything, any more? Oh, so what is the future for Bisnode, is the question. Wow, great question. <laughs> Hiring robots, perhaps. The future for Bisnode is great. <laughs> <laughs> if there are no more questions, then... Uh... I think we did a great job. Thanks. <laughs> you too. <laughs> This is fun.